Hello again, we're working through um, ME4111 uh, statics tutorial sheet four, and we're currently on question six. So when we look at this question, what we have is uh, this tube section um, that is to support four parallel forces as shown. So we've got the 600, the FD, FC, and the 500. And we're asked to determine the magnitude of FC and FD. So this force and this one uh, acted at points C and D so that the equivalent resultant force of the force system acts through the midpoint O of the tube. And again, with these things, it's useful just to, to take stock and actually figure out well, what actually is, is being asked. So what we want is that the resultant force um, acts at that point. Okay, so that we want to we want it located there. So the equivalent force coupled system is simply a force acting at that point. Now what that means is that the sum of the moments um, about point O is equal to zero. So that's essentially what we've been asked is to produce a force coupled system that is located at O such that the resultant force acts there. So that's fine, but at the moment equals zero. Now, as soon as you realize that, you can probably quickly work out from inspection that, you know, FC is equal to 600 and FD equals 500. Well, what we're going to do is we're not going to make that assumption. We're going to work through um, by taking the actual moments. Okay, so our requirement is that uh, the sum of the moments equals zero at point O, because that gives us the just equivalent force system to be located precisely at that location. But what we're going to do is with, there's two ways we can do it. Um, as in the previous example, we could use uh, vector cross products. Uh, this time we're going to do it just by looking in the respective axes. I'm doing that because the forces are constrained to one direction. And when they're all constrained to one direction, it's quite useful just to look in from the axes um, because you'll quickly get the answer out. Uh, you can, of course, do it using the vector cross product. There's nothing wrong with that. It just takes uh, a bit longer to work out. Now, because uh, all these forces are acting in the negative z direction, it means that there's no rotation effect about the z axis. So I only need to consider the x axis and the y axis. So I'm going to start with the uh, x axis here. Okay, and I'm going to take, got a better drawing, uh, try that again color maybe to make it more visible. Um, I'm just going to take that x-axis and look at the rotations um, about that axis caused by the forces. And again, it's tempting to say, you know, left equals right, uh, up equals down, that kind of stuff. Uh, avoid that. Use the pure vector form. So take moments, take a magnitude, a direction, a di sorry, a magnitude, a distance, assign a direction based on the direction of rotation, and set them equal to zero. Okay, so don't be doing left side equals right side. You can't get away in this problem, but you want to get good habits uh, working. So if we take the moments with the x-axis, we have 600, which is the force at point A. Okay, so that's this one there. The distance is 0 0.4, so that's the distance from the line of action of that force to the x-axis. And the direction is anti-clockwise about the x-axis, which is plus. Okay, so that's why the plus is doing that. And get into the habit of doing force, distance, direction. The next force then is the uh, 500. And again, that's a distance of 0.4 away. Uh, but it's this side, so as we rotate, it's going to cause a clockwise rotation, which gives us the minus sign. Then I have FD and... FC is taken care of. So FD times 0.4, and again, it's going to cause a positive rotation, and FC is going to cause a negative rotation. So that gives us um, an equation that has FD minus FC is equal to 100. After that, then, we take the, um, the y-axis. So again, rotations about that. So we're looking about this particular axis here. And we're looking at this kind of distances. So the distances are in the x direction when you look in from the y-axis. So again, they're all going to be 0.2. Right, so we can see that there in our um, 
we work through it. So 600 times 0.2 uh, anticlockwise rotation becomes positive. 500 times 0.2 anticlockwise rotation becomes positive. Then we have FD is uh, FD times 0.2 clockwise rotation, so it's negative. And ditto for uh, FC. So that gives us FD plus FC equals 100. So what we have then are our two equations, uh, two unknowns, and we can solve for those. So we do that over here. And if you just work through that very quickly, you see that uh, FD is 600 and FC is 500. Okay, that concludes that question. Thank you for listening, and I hope.